church, it may have been someone who was like a mother to you. You may find in your workplace some time for somebody that's a little bit more mature and elder than you that you can confide in, you regard as a mother. There's always somebody that can nurture you as a mother. It could be an aunt. You know, so as we celebrate mothers, I want to encourage us morning even. There are mothers here this morning, some, you know, you have um, nieces, nephews, cousins, what have you, but you have people that look up to you and respect you as a mother. So this morning, you know, we'd like to honor all mothers, so I'd like all the mothers in the house to please stand. Those of you who have nieces, nephews, I want you to stand too because they too look to you as a mother. So we celebrate you this morning. Amen. So would you stand as we celebrate you? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I want to ask Kurt to come out. Kurt, can you put something for the mothers? I know, you know, we've got to maintain our temple. Our bodies are in temple. Amen. Tell your neighbor that say your body is a temple. Yeah, so I was in kind of two minds, there was two minds. We said, okay, we would not give you sweets or something to sweet. So we 
like to bless you with a little token of appreciation to you and by giving you something healthy. Amen. Also in the same spirit, I'd like to also extend a happy Mother's Day uh, from myself, Pastor Sharon, and our family. All the mothers, happy Mother's Day. We're giving the mothers something healthy this morning. Amen. Praise God. I don't want you to have your levels go up and then you told me, Pastor, my levels went up, I'm at the hospital. This will keep you away from the hospital, trust me. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't like rain there either. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. somebody left their house to you as an inheritance, how many of you would only occupy the living room of that house and forget about the rest of the house? You'd occupy the living room. In other words, you'd stay in the lounge. You would cook in the lounge, sleep in the lounge. Everything you would do, you would do in the lounge. How many of you would do that? It is actually foolishness. 
Isaiah chapter 1 and verses 19 to 20, the Word of God says, if, you see, if, it's a very small word, it's a two-letter word, very small. Sometimes as we read scripture, we, we tend to neglect a word like that. You know, when God says, if, powerful, if. So what God is saying here, you have a choice. If tells you that you have a choice, there's something that you've got you've to choose, you've got to decide. And God says, if you are willing, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Does the Bible say that? Amen. He says, if you are willing. In other words, willing means consenting to. If you are consenting to, if you yield to, or if you accept, if you desire, if you are willing and obedient. Obedient means, it's, it's a word, shama. Shama means to hear with attention. It means to pay attention to. So God says, if you consent to. In other words, God's saying, if you consent to. If you give permission to. And you pay attention. Then he says, you shall eat the good of the land. But, you see verse 20, you see? Now, there's a choice. You can either be willing and obedient, or you can be unwilling and disobedient. So he says, but if you refuse, if you refuse and rebel, in other words, you are contentious, you are disobedient, you shall be devoured by the sword. You see that? If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, if you refuse and you are contentious, if you refuse and you are disobedient, You'll be devoured by the sword. Amen. Now I'm talking about inheritances. I want to share with you something that, you know, this well, God is telling us something that if we are willing and obedient, if you are willing and obedient to what? If you are willing and obedient to his laws, if you are willing and obedient to his statutes, to his judgments, to his commandments, you shall eat the good of the land. And very often, very, very often, you find that when you are walking in line with God's will and God's plan, at times it will look like things are not working out. Very often, when you are walking in line with God's will for your life, when you are walking in line with God's plan for your life, you will find that many times it looks like things are not working out. But in the end, you find that it's the best path to ever have followed. You see, it may not be speaking now while you while you're journeying, but in the end, at the end of it, at the end of it, you realize, you come to the uh, realization that it was the best decision and the best path you've ever chosen to go for. In other words, at the end of the day, it's a matter of trust. It's a matter of trust. That's what God is saying here. If you are willing and obedient, if you are willing to trust me, obedient enough to trust me, you'll eat the good of the land. It's a matter of trust. I'm talking about inheritance. How many of you know that throughout scripture we find that, you know, when you read from Genesis to Revelation, the plans that God has for his people, we always hear those words echoing of the land of milk and honey. Amen. Amen. God spoke to Israel and he said to Israel that he's leading them and he's giving them a land of milk and honey. Hallelujah. Did you know, if you look at the modern day map of Israel, which Israel occupies, 
on the modern day map. And you go and you look at the original map that God had planned for Israel. Did you know that there's a vast difference? Did you know that the land that Israel occupies today, it's, it's minute in comparison to what God had origin, what originally planned for them to occupy? Hence, I said to you, if somebody were to leave you by inheritance a whole house, a mansion, and you only stayed in the lounge, in the sitting room, in the living room, you don't enjoy the entire house. And you know who enjoys the, the rest of the house? The spiders, the cockroaches, the dust mites. You see, because you, you choose to stay there. And it's the same with Israel. God's plan for Israel was a land of milk and honey. If you go look at the original biblical map that God had, that God spoke about in Scripture. God, you know, in Scripture, God even spoke about the borders of that territory that Israel would occupy. And you look at it today, it is an eyesore. Hence, you find that, listen, Israel, land of milk and honey speaks of wealth, it speaks of abundance, it speaks of, it speaks of excellence. That's what God had in plan and in store for Israel, but Israel does not enjoy that today. Yes, God in His mercy, in His great mercy, you find that Israel today thrives in agriculture, they thrive in armaments, hallelujah, and they thrive in technology. But when it comes to something that is truly valuable, a valuable resource that Israel has an entitlement to but does not have, they do not have it. But if you look at all their neighboring lands, their neighbors, what their neighbors have, is something that Israel was supposed to have, but through disobedience, they do not have it today. And what I'm talking about is oil. What I'm talking about is oil. Did you know in the Bible, just go with me to Genesis 49, I want to show you something. It's enshrined in scripture, biblical scholars have believed that this refers to the oil beneath the ground that God had in store for Israel. Genesis 49, and I want you to keep your finger there, we're going to read that one first, but Genesis 49 and then Deuteronomy 33. Deuteronomy 33. Hallelujah. Genesis 49. Verse 22, praise God. This is what Jacob, Jacob was blessing his son. Watch what he says about, Jacob, about his son Joseph. Verse 22, Joseph is a fruitful vow. A fruitful vow by a, what does your Bible say there? A fruitful vow by a well. You see that? Joseph is a fruitful bow. A fruitful bow by a well. By a well. You know, sometimes we read that and we think it only refers to water when you hear about a well. You think about water. But well is an oil well. His branches run over the wall. You see, the one that possesses the well is the one that dictates. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Who, who dictates the, the oil prices today? The OPEC countries. That, by entitlement, was supposed to be Israel's. So, instead of the Isaacs, the Israel's having it, it belongs now to the Ishmaelites. The Arab nations are the ones controlling the oil prices. They're the ones that are running the scenes. But watch it, watch it. He says his branches run over the wall because of the well. That's, that's his inheritance, that's his entitlement. Verse 25, he goes on. He says, by the God of your father who will help you. 
And by the Almighty who will bless you with blessings of heaven above, blessings, watch, of the deep that lies beneath. What's he referring to? That which lies beneath the earth's surface. The God of your Father who will help you. You see, it's by God. God, God is the one who put everything there. The earth belongs to the Lord and the fullness therein. Did you know you, where your house is, where you're living? Did you know? You, you don't know. God, God has probably placed an oil well there. You just don't know it. God has probably placed a, a, a water spring there. You just don't know it. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? You see, the God we serve, you've got to remain faithful to God and you've got to trust God despite the odds. Despite how difficult it may seem at times, I said it's a matter of trust. You've got to trust God, trust Him fully, trust Him to the end. Because you just don't know. You may be living in your house and saying, oh Lord, what's going to happen? Oh Lord. Now you worry about things you shouldn't be worried about. You should be sitting at the Master's feet. Worshipping God, serving God, trusting God and all is well. You might just find that one day, just walking around your house, you start, start to see something coming up from the ground surface. It's happened. I mean, how many of you, you, you know, you go to the stores and you see that water, that thirsty water? See that thirsty water? That water is right here in Newcastle, in Normandy. Did you know that? Right here, on our doorstep. Do you know how that, how that water came about? The person owns the farm. And they didn't know that there was a water spring on the farm. They didn't know that. They owned that farm for years and years and years. And somebody eventually discovered that there was moisture. And then they started testing it. And then only to find out, oh, wow, there's a water spring here. Now today, every shop you go into, oh Jesus, I think I'm in the wrong place here. You see, who put that water there? God. You see, and this is what Jacob is saying to his son. He says, by the God of your father who will help you. He says, you see, he's telling it. My God is going to help you. You see, that's how we as parents, you've got you to pass this message on to your children and tell them, by the God who helped me, by my God, he helped me and he's going to help you. You've got to trust my God because I've seen my God come through for me. I've seen how my God made a way for me. This same God that I serve is going to come through for you. He's going to make a way for you. Say amen, somebody. Amen. You know, even, listen. Abraham's servant, the servant of Abraham, he watched the life of his master Abraham. He saw how Abraham prospered. Hence, when Abraham looked around and he said, listen, my servant, my son will not take a wife from this land, but go to my kinsman. He sent his servant and he said, the God whom I serve, the God before whom I stand and whom I serve, he will go with you. This servant saw how God came through for Abraham time after time after time after time again. Hence, when he was going, he started praying. And he said, O oh God of my master Abraham, if I have found favor in your sight today, let it be. You see, he even started speaking to God as Abraham was speaking to God as a friend. So he, he saw how Abraham was speaking to God. So he demonstrated that very same faith. And he told God specific things about this woman. When he gets to the well, this woman must, she must do specific things. And when he got there, lo and behold, it was so. You understand? That's why even when he went to the family, he said, The Lord God, the Lord God of my master Abraham, has prospered him and he's become exceedingly prosperous. You see, this God we serve, you may be of the opinion that you need to be born into a rich family. 
You may be of the opinion that you need to be advantaged in this life. You may be of the opinion that, you know, it's, you know these things are for specific people. I don't really have the education. I don't really have the expertise or the skill. I don't have these things. Hence, I will not make it. But let me tell you, God is not a respecter of persons. He can take you from being a nobody this morning to being a somebody this evening. Talk to me, somebody. That's the God that we serve. God is a specialist at transforming lives and at changing people's identities. He's a specialist at that. He can take you from being sick to being healed. He can take you from being broken to being restored and made whole. That's the God we serve. He can take you from being poor to being rich. That's the God we serve. You may say, but I don't have the skill. Listen, when you study the scriptures and you spend time in the word of God, you'll find that even when God was speaking to Moses concerning the building of the tabernacle, the place of meeting, he said, I have anointed the son of Uri with skill. He had master craftsmen. God had master craftsmen. God can give you a gift. You may be sitting on a gift that you just don't know you have yet because you're too lazy. To disobedient, you're hard hearted and hard headed. Let me tell you this morning it's time that you submit your will to His will. It's only through submission that God can elevate you. It's not your way, it's His way. Come on, somebody. Watch this what He says By the God of your Father, who will help? He's telling him, listen, my son, I'm going. I'm going. The God who was with me, the God who created me, the God who gave me form, the God who was with me on my earthly journey, the God who helped me, the one whom I wrestled, This God who helped me, He will help you. You are not alone. Do you know, I think that's really powerful. This is powerful. When Jacob is blessing his sons, this is powerful. Because all of us, many of us, you would want to live a very long life. But you know what? This life on earth, it was never intended to be a permanent one. It is not a permanent one. Life on earth is temporal. And whilst you're living on this earth, this is where whatever you do on this earth determines where you spend your eternity. Everything you do, everything you say, everything you think, whilst on this earth, is linked to your eternity. See, Jacob was such a man who walked with God that at the very end of his days, he could tell his son, that by my God, God who helped me, I came so far. And now he's about to call me home. But you, my son, you will not be alone. As I too was never alone. You remember what happened? Jacob had to leave his father's house, go to his uncle. You understand that? I mean, how difficult it must be for a child because of your sibling, things like that. You've got to leave home. No time enough to say bye, mom, bye. Do you understand? Because you don't know when you'll see them again. But he goes to live with his uncle. He was not alone because when he went, God was with him. 
that even where he went to, his uncle was battling. But because of him, God blessed his uncle's house. And his uncle done him in. You see, you, somebody does you in. You make a big issue about it. You have a court case about it. Look at Jacob. His uncle done him in. He didn't repay evil for evil. He continued to serve his uncle. His uncle done him in. Many of us have been done in. But you can learn from, you, from Jacob. But even though he was done in, God listened. God is the best accountant ever. He knows exactly how to balance your books. He knows exactly how to repay. That's why he says, vengeance is mine, not yours. You see, imagine, listen, if you had to live your life trying to take revenge, trying to repay someone for the evil they've done to you, you'll never enjoy life. Because your life will be spent on, how can I make a comeback? How can I do this? How can I do that? And you know what's amazing? Let me tell you something. God knows the hearts of men. That the more evil you try to do, you'll find that that person's heart, that person's heart with God could be better than yours. Yet you're trying to repay evil. And the more you try to play revenge, God just keeps prospering that person. Prospering that person. Prospering that person. That person's enjoying life. And you're not. <laughs> what a waste of life. You see, that's why I said to you, God has such a large inheritance for each of us. That on this earth, you can enjoy heaven on this earth. Many people, many people have that perception. One day when I die and I get to heaven, it will be like this, like that, like that. You can experience that here, while on the earth. You can experience it. You can experience the peace of God. You can experience the love of God. You can experience the joy of God. You can experience the blessing of God. You can experience it. You can experience his power. This God whom you serve. You remember Gideon with the fleece? Imagine how you can interact with God like that. Lord God, you know. You understand what I'm saying? That God can be so close to you. God can show you things in your own home. And you're not really enjoying. You see, how many of us really experience that? Just experience a little bit of that. See, sometimes you rob yourself of all of that because your ways are not in line with God's ways. Your thoughts are not in line with His thoughts. You're walking your own path and not His path. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's awesome to serve the Lord. You know, sometimes you may wrestle with God. It's true, you know. You say, Lord, but, but God, really, does, you understand? And then at the end of the day, you know, why else you think that you find God reveals your stupidity to you? And it just leaves you to say, oh God, I know you, God, now. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. By the God of your Father, Holy Lord, and by the Almighty, by the Almighty, the God of all might, who will bless you? Who will bless you with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lies beneath, blessings of the breasts and of the womb? The blessings of your father have excelled, watch it, the blessings of your father have excelled the blessings of my ancestors up to the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. Wow. 
they shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him who was separate from his brothers. See that? Then Deuteronomy 33. Verse 24. Watch what Moses says concerning Asher. Deuteronomy 33, 24. And of Asher, he said, Asher is most blessed of sons. I love that. Asher is most blessed of sons. Let him be favored by his brothers. And let him dip his foot. Where's your foot? Where's your foot? Yes. Where's your foot? Is your foot above? Is it here or is it at the ground surface? Watch what he says. Let him dip his foot away. about the inheritance, about the land that they will possess. That Asher, where you walk, you will walk on oil. Where you walk, oil will be discovered, Asher. Oil will be discovered there, Asher. But sadly enough, because of the hardness of heart, because of stubbornness, the stubbornness of heart, Israel did not enter the promised land. The old generation had to die. They died in the wilderness because they didn't trust God. They never trusted. Him. Isaiah, Isaiah's time was after Moses. And the Lord gives his word to Isaiah and he says, Tell my people, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. The land is mine, declares the Lord. It's a land of milk and honey. It is my land. In spite of people saying that it's a land that devours its people, it sounds like what people are saying about South Africa today. That this country, this land is in doom. This land has gone to the dogs. Let me tell you, the future of this land is in the mouth of every believer. You're going to speak what the people are speaking or you're going to speak what God is speaking. Hallelujah. Remember the ten spies when they came back? They said it's a land that devours its people. It's a land where there's giants. We are like grasshoppers. And there are people today in South Africa who consider themselves to be like grasshoppers. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter what the challenges are. It doesn't matter what the inflation rate is. It doesn't matter what the repossession rate is. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the interest rate is. You belong to another economy. It's called the economy of God. God is in control of your resources. God is in control of your life. God, is, come and talk to me, somebody. You see, when you start partnering with God and you give in to God what belongs to God, then God is involved in your finances too. It's amazing. It's amazing what God will do with you. It's amazing. Ask me, I've seen it. I've seen it. You know, there's a garage in town. The shell garage down there used to be an engine. You know those petrol guys that put the petrol, they knew me as, as the 20 rand car. But every time I went there, I only found 20 rand. And you know what 20 rand would do? It would take me a whole week. At one time, I remember I had to go minister in Matadeni. 
I was called to minister on a Wednesday evening straight after work. And I left work, got into the car, and the reserve light was on, and I didn't have a 20 rand. And I started praying, I prayed in tongues. Went to that car, prayed in tongues. Prayed in tongues. And you know what happened? The gauge moved. Come on, you want to praise God, the gauge moved. I was going to do the Father's business. It's not my business, the Father's business. I was praying in tongues, the gauge moved. That petrol took me to Mother Delhi. It brought me back home. That's the God we serve. The other day when I went there and I was feeling, you know, diesel. Pastor Sherman overheard this guy saying, Ah, I'm funny. I'm funny to be around the class. I said, Hey, talented. I left it long time ago because God has upgraded me now. I have faith in God and He'll provide because I've been partnering with God. God is, in, God is involved. What about you? What about you? What about you? I mean, I've seen how God comes to me. See, God speaks about Asia. Dip your foot in oil. Have you been dipping? Did you know that today there's a company that's established in Israel? It's called the Zion Oil and Gas Company. The Zion Oil and Gas Company established in Israel. And that company has been established to try and assist the economy of Israel. They involve oil and gas. Their sole purpose is to explore for oil and gas. Their assignment, their vision as a company is to help Israel become an energy independent country. And I stop myself and I think to myself, because of disobedience, you have to struggle to get it. Where God was giving it to you in the beginning. Come on. Where God was giving it to you. That was His grace. That was His favor. One day of favor is better than a thousand days of labor. Now you're laboring for something that was given to you by faith. That's the mandate of that country. That country, they have two petroleum explo uh, exploration licenses. And the, the, the one license name is the Joseph license. And the other one is known as the Asher Manessa license. They got that from scripture. They're holding on to the word. And you know what? Things are going well with that company. And as I mentioned before, God in His mercy, God did not throw Israel away. They still flourish in terms of agriculture, in terms of technology and armaments. They are still flourishing. But this one thing that they really, really, really seek, I believe God will give it to them too. Because there are so many Messianic Jews today in Israel. There are so many Jews, just by reading the scriptures, by reading the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, after reading the Gospels, when you speak to any Messianic Jew, he'll tell you, when I read those four books, I found the Messiah. The hearts are turning to God. God is not abandoned. God will come through for Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, when God promises you something, beloved, we don't have to first see it before we start obeying God. Many people have that mentality. They go through life seeing is believing. Then you walk this life with the toughest kind of faith and you never enjoy the real blessing of the kingdom. Because Jesus said he is more blessed to believe, not that it is. Because if you haven't seen it and you believe it, it's a 
reality. You see, so, but listen, when you've seen something, what do you believe for now? Because you've, you've seen it. So what do you believe for? You can't believe beyond what you see. But what you do not see, if you believe, you believe the unseen. It's so real to you. It gives you something to wake up to. It gives you something to look forward to. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Jesus. How precious. So don't wait to see until you obey God. Obey Him before you see. Hallelujah. It's a matter of trust. God has your future all planned out. God has your life all planned out. But if you're trying to work it on your own and trying to get it right on your own, let me tell you now, give your rule away. Your plan is going to fail. I don't care how many plans you have. There's 26 letters in the alphabet. You may have 26 plans. And the last plan is Z. All those plans, including that one, still amount to zero. Because God's plan for you is greater. All you need to do is trust Him. All you need to do is believe Him. Be willing to obey Him. Be willing to trust Him. Trust Him. Jeremiah 29 and heaven, we know, God says, He knows the thoughts and plans and He thinks towards us. Thoughts and plans to prosper us, to give us a future and a hope. That's God's plans. If you ever wanted to know what God's plans for your life are, go home today, take Jeremiah 29, 11. I don't care. You can take paint if you want to. Take a crayon, take something, but write it on the wall somewhere in your house or somewhere in your property. These are God's plans for my life. I don't care who says what. I don't care what the government may be planning concerning my life. They have no say over my life. There's no political party that can give you a better life except Jehovah God Almighty. I don't care all them politicians who be watching me now to you all a bunch of lies. God is true. The only word you can trust is the word of God. That's the only word. There was a time when they handed out Bibles in our schools. We had no teenage pregnancies. We had children that were, that were orderly children. Our institutions of learning were thriving because they were giving out Bibles. But then the government of the day came, they done away with the Bibles and they started handing out condoms. And we separate the mess that we have in the country. Brothers and sisters, I say this with all respect. That we as a church, we've been complacent. We as a church, we've kept quiet. We've allowed these things to happen. When did we ever mourn before God and say, God, it is an atrocity what is happening in our country, in our schools, in the lives of our people. Our people are perishing. The innocence of our children is being ripped from them. We need, oh Lord, your word back in our schools. We need your word, oh Lord, back in our government, back in our parliament. We need your word, oh God. When the word of God was there, listen, let me tell you people, criminals never got away scot free. See, I'm giving you things that you can pray for. That's not how life is supposed to be. This the Bible says things will get worse and we see it. Are we talking about it or praying about it? What are you enjoying in your life? Are you staying in the living room? Or are you going to enjoy the mansion? Don't be shy. It's not a sin to lift up 
there is not a sin to be working. The Bible says a lazy man shall not eat. Let me tell you something. Wherever you're working, you will thrive by the grace of God. Wherever you are, you will thrive by the grace of God. Business people too, raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand. Because let me tell you, let me tell you, the God that we serve is known as El Shaddai. He's the, come on, he's the God of more than enough. You see, where you are right now, you may think that, oh Lord, yes, there's more to this. And God says, yes, there is more. God can take you just like he took Joseph from the prison to the palace. God can take you from the little small office and take you to the boardroom. That's what God can do. God can take you from running a little micro enterprise to being something that is macro. That's the God we serve. May the Lord bless you. May He prosper you. May He cause you to be exceedingly prosperous. May He cause you to be fruitful in all you do and in all you set your hand to do. Psalm 16 verse 11 says, You will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand they are pleasures forevermore. May the Lord God Almighty grant unto you the sure mercies of his servant David. The Bible speaks about King Solomon. It says King Solomon, he made silver as common as stones. Uh, Solomon served the same God that you and I serve today. He's not a different God. He hasn't changed. He doesn't change. He doesn't change for no man. And if Solomon could make silver as common as the stones, I mean, how many stones are there outside? Huh? Hallelujah. That's what God can do with your life. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, the path, there's a path that God has laid out before you. There's a path that He has laid out before you. There's a path that He has ordained for you. And it's a good path. It's a path that is filled with good and lovely things. It's a path that is filled with everything good to cause you to excel in life. Hallelujah. If you are willing and you are obedient, you will eat the good of the land. You will eat it. The laws that God has laid out in His Word, the laws that God has laid out in His Holy Word, they are for our long-term benefits. Woo. You know, you get there's three there's three plans. There's three plans. You speak to, you know, many people that will study management and things like that. They learn about these things. You get a short, immediate plan. A short term plan. Even investors, many of you investors, insurance people have come to you trying to sell insurance and investments to you. They tell you about a short term investment plan. Because it's a short term plan. It helps in the short term. Then there's the medium term, which is not so short but also not so long. It's just medium. It's like an average. And then there's the long term plan. The long term plan. Many of you young people are telling you this whilst you're still young. You've got to have a long term plan for your future and your investment. Because many people, they live their lives short term, short term gratification, short term satisfaction. But once that is finished, it's finished. And when you come to the medium term, you find there's nothing really for you to, to enjoy. Maybe there may be just a little small scrap, but your long term one, the long term one is like a retirement, like an annuity, something that speaks at the end of your life. At the end of your working career, or your entrepreneurship career, whatever it is. Because once you're on pension, once you're on pension, you must remember, you cannot do what you used to do back then. 
It's either you obey or you disobey. There's no partial obedience. Hallelujah. We will not miss out through disobedience or partial obedience, but we will follow God fully to take possession of what He has promised. I don't know about you, but I want to take possession. Because one thing I've learned, one thing God has told me, is that when you obey God's instruction, you are delivered from destruction. When you obey God's instruction, you are delivered from destruction. You will not see destruction. It will be far from you when it comes. Only with your eyes shall you behold the reward of the wicked when it comes, says the Lord. Because you'll be seated in the pavilion of the Most High. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. That's the God we serve. Amen. The Lord will guide you, He will lead you, He will teach you. Oh boy, there are things yet to be discovered. Things yet to be discovered. Say, Ramushana, Makaste, Ramu, Postana. Hallelujah. 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 gravitate towards you. Only keep your eye on the Lord. Keep your eye on His word. Keep your eye on the promise. They are coming. They are coming. From the north, the south, the east, the west. They will gravitate towards you. It's a great love. You know, many either go on pension, retirement, or whatever you are there, they think, okay, I've lived my life. God says, you haven't really lived your life. Did you know, did you know that for some people, you know, some people, they, learn, they consider the 60s and the 20s and the 30s the best years of their lives. But did you know for those who truly serve the Lord, those who walk with the Lord, every day of their life is the best day of their life. Did you know that those who are in their own, in their prime, they truly experience the better, the better days? Because the latter rain is better than the former. The latter rain, Brother Jeff, is better than the former. Brother Marlon, Brother Felix, the latter rain. The latter rain, it's falling, it's falling, it's falling, it's falling, it's falling, it's falling. He's got to be sensitive to his voice. Trust him. Amen. Trust him. The gate for all of us. Trust him. Amen. Amen. Come and give the Lord a praise.
Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you the worship. Thank you for your word, your sovereign word. Thank you, Lord of God, for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, we just thank you this morning. Thank you that we are not alone in this life. Thank you that you are with us to help us, to guide us, to lead us, to teach us. Father, I pray for each and every person here. As we will grow, Lord, and we will grow, Lord God, in the power of your spirit and your word. I pray that every man, every woman, young and old, every boy and girl, that they be emboldened by your word and by your spirit, God. That, Lord, this week, as they step into this week, may they know that they step into your blessing. I pray that you reveal unto them, Lord, the secrets and treasures hidden in secret places. I pray that in the night time, Lord, in their beds, you will speak to them in dreams and visions. I pray that you reveal to them, Lord, your glorious plan their lives. I pray that they will trust you. I pray that they will hold on to your word and not let go. It's like Jacob, Lord, you will not go until your word comes to pass. You will not let go of your word until it comes to pass. There's power in your word to save, power in your word to heal, power in your word to deliver, power in your word to set free. Jesus' name. Ah, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with each and every one of you, both now and forevermore. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord God Almighty, shower you with all blessing from heaven above. May the Lord God cause you to prosperous and exceedingly 